Hi everyone, this is an examples video for our uh, second part of kinematics and the introduction to forces. Uh, so it should give you some uh, examples to back up what the lecture videos have been showing you and give you an idea of what's important and how do we use the things we learn in the lecture videos. Let's start out with a circular motion problem. Uh, this uh, asks the question about secret physics agent Marie Heisenberg, who is riding her motorcycle over a circular hill, and that circular hill has a radius of r. So uh, right here, we're just looking at the motorcycle. The radius of our little object here is r. And we want to ask the question, uh, what is the maximum speed v that she can travel at the top of the hill uh, and remain in contact with the ground? Now, this is a fairly common uh, problem uh, as phrased, and what's going to be happening is at the top of the hill, uh, later on we'll learn about forces and think about things in terms of normal forces and gravitational forces and stuff. But right now, uh, we kind of want to think about this in the context of accelerations, and everything near the Earth experiences this acceleration downward uh, from gravity. And the condition that we want is at the top of the hill, the maximum acceleration that uh, Marie can experience is that her centripetal acceleration, that's A sub C, uh, needs to be provided by gravity. So that's the condition of this problem. So gravity provides all of the centripetal acceleration. And as we get in that case, we have a simple circular path here. So we can simply say that that centripetal acceleration is also equal to V squared over R, just using the circular motion, the uniform circular motion expression for acceleration. And so this is just asking the question, well, what is V such that I get my acceleration of G? So if I solve this problem here, I get that V is uh, squared is, uh, I'll multiply the R up to the other side with the G. So I get V squared is G times R. And then V is just going to be the square root of G R. If I plug in uh, that expression, uh, then we will just use uh, our industry standard 10.0 meters per second squared for gravity near Earth, just to keep the math a little simple. We'll plug in our radius of 100 meters, uh, multiply that out, 1,000 meters squared per second squared, and the square root of that is 31.6 meters per second. So this is the maximum speed that uh, she can travel, otherwise uh, the gravitational acceleration will not be sufficient to provide the acceleration. You'll notice if we go back here, if V is really large, then the required acceleration downward is going to be larger than G, and as a result, uh, cannot remain on circular motion. So this gives the sort of way we want to think about these acceleration problems um, and kind of the framework to approach this so that we can sort of think about this in terms of traveling, what are the accelerations required to be on that circular path. Okay, so this gives us the mechanics that we need to solve problems like this. Uh, I give you a particle undergoing plane curvilinear motion, which just means it's moving in a curve in a two-dimensional plane. Uh, its velocity vector is given to us as 3i hat plus 4j hat meters per second, and the radius of curvature is 6.25 meters per second. So let's uh, sketch that out for a moment. So we have a velocity vector uh, for a particle, and so we have the particle. Its velocity goes over 3 meters per second, up 4 meters per second, and so its velocity which is tangent to the curve, looks a little like that. So the curve must look something like this, so that it's tangent at that point. And we know at that point also, its radius of curvature is 6.25 meters. We also know that the particle is slowing down so that there is an acceleration in the tangential direction, pulling it backwards. And then it's on this curve, so there's got to be a centripetal or radial acceleration. Sorry, I overwrote my 3. That's a 3 uh, meters per second. Okay, 
So that gives us the mechanics we want to set this up. Uh, we'd like to know what the velocity in the normal tangential coordinates is. The velocity is always in the tangent direction, so this is actually pretty easy. Uh, it is um, v is purely in the tangent direction, and it's the magnitude of the vector in that direction. So it's 3 squared plus 4 squared tangent meters per second, or 5 meters per second in the tangent direction. There is no normal component to the velocity ever. The acceleration is a little harder. The acceleration has a radial component in the normal direction plus a tangential component in the tangent direction. We know that the radial component has a magnitude of v squared over r in the normal direction, and then the tangent is specified in the problem right up here. So v squared over r, that's a 25 meters squared per second squared over 6.25 meters in the normal direction, plus um, a component in the uh, tangent direction. It's slowing down, so I can project that and note that it is in the opposite direction of the velocity vector, so it's minus 2 meters per second in the tangent direction. Uh, this uh, chunk here goes to 4 meters per second, and so we are left with our final answer of 4 meters per second in the normal direction minus 2 meters per second in the tangent direction. Okay, uh, let's try another problem. Uh, this one asks the question of, at a given instant, the jet plane has a speed of 400 meters per second and an acceleration of 30 meters per second acting in the direction shown. There's a 60 degree angle between the velocity and the acceleration. Determine the increase in the plane's speed and the instantaneous radius of curvature of the path. And so we have a total uh, acceleration in the nt coordinate system. So we can set up, uh, this is the n hat direction, and this is the t hat direction. So this becomes the radial component of the acceleration in the normal direction, plus the tangent component in the tangent direction. And here we can use the fact that the velocity vector points in the tangent direction to figure out what these components are, namely that if I project the acceleration into the tangent direction here, looks uh, that kind of projection there, so I'll actually draw it here, and I'll say that this projection uh, in this component, the radial component, must be uh, equal to a times the sine of 60 degrees. And then the tangential component, which goes along the bottom, is going to have a magnitude of a cos 60 degrees. So that gives us the pieces that we need. We know that the tangential component is going uh, forward here. So this is, uh, let's see here, the radial. Let's do the radial first. A uh, sine of 60 degrees in the n hat plus the tangent which is a cos 60 degrees in the uh, tangent direction and so uh, if we actually uh, figure out we need to know what the increase in the rate plane's rate of speed is that is the tangential component a t is the rate of increase in the plane's speed so that is uh, a sub t is equal to 30 meters per second squared times the cosine of 60 degrees. That is a half. So this is equal to 15 meters per second squared. Done. Uh, we can do the same calculation to figure out the radial component. And there we know that the radial component is equal to 30 meters, uh, a sine of the angle, but that's also equal to v squared over r. So we can figure out that r is v squared over a sine of theta, which is equal to 400 meters per second quantity squared over the acceleration, which is 30 meters per second squared times the sine of 60 degrees, which is root 3 
over 2. And if we uh, grind that all out, we get an answer of 6.16 kilometers. Okay, we're almost there. In the next problem, we'd like to consider uh, what happens if our secret physics agent from before is now riding her motorcycle along a parabolic track. And this parabolic track has a shape of y is equal to ax squared, where a is a constant that's 10 to the minus 2 per meter. Uh, and that just makes the units work out. Uh, so that means that the shape of this parabola just has the shape y equals ax squared. And if Agent Heisenberg is traveling at 20 meters per second here at this time, and is at x is equal to 100 meters, so that's, uh, I'll just label this in here, that distance here is 100 meters, we want to ask the question, what is the magnitude of centripetal acceleration she experiences if the motorcycle remains on the track? So this is a very carefully phrased problem here where we want to find out what her acceleration is. Now, the acceleration is going to use the formula, the centripetal acceleration a sub c is going to have the magnitude v squared over r. But r here isn't on a circular track anymore. It's following this parabolic trajectory. And therefore, we need to use the equivalent radius here, or the radius of curvature. And we were given this radius of curvature formula from inside the lecture, and so now we're going to put it to use. What we want to do is calculate at the point where Marie Heisenberg is, what is the derivative and the second derivative of the shape of the track. So we can calculate those out. So we know that dy by dx is going to be the derivative with respect to x of ax squared. a is a constant. Uh, the derivative of x squared is just 2x. So this derivative is 2ax. The second derivative of y with respect to x squared is going to just be d by dx of this 2ax. Now that 2a again is a constant, so we consider the derivative of x, and that just has value of 1, so it's 2a times 1, or coming back to 2a. What we now need to do is actually determine these. Uh, we want to evaluate at x is equal to 100 meters. So dy by dx at that point is 2. Time, we're going to go back up here, uh, 2ax. So we plug in the value for a. Uh, that's right here. So we'll plug that in. 2 times 10 to the minus 2 meters times x, which is going to have a value of 100 meters from the problem. And so that's just going to have a value of 2. Uh, notice that the, oh, sorry, this is meters inverse and the meters. Uh, now the meters and the meters inverse will cancel out with each other. Uh, next, we're going to consider d squared y by dx squared evaluated at 2ax. This has just an expression of 2a, uh, which is just going to be 2 times 10 to the minus 2 inverse meters. And then we're going to plug this in to figure out what the radius is. The radius is going to be equal to 1 plus the dy dx quantity squared. So this is 1 plus... Uh, we calculated the value there as 2, no units, 1 plus 2 squared, all raised to the 3 halves power, divided by the 2 times 10 to the minus 2, or 0 0.02 meters inverse. And so you'll notice that this whole radius ends up having a, 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 a unit of meters, because that's 1 over inverse meters in the denominator. And then if we plug this value into our calculator, that's 1 plus 5 to the 3 halves divided by 0 0.02, uh, we get an answer of 559 meters. Then we go over to uh, the centripetal acceleration formula uh, up here, and now we just use this as the radius. It's the equivalent circular radius at that point in the parabola. So when we go ahead and plug that in, we get a value of, let's see here, we get v squared over r 
uh, it's lowercase r as I've been drawing it. So AC is V squared over R is equal to 20 meters per second quantity squared over 559 meters, which is the equivalent radius. And that'll give us an acceleration of 0 0.72 meters per second squared. So this is the centripetal acceleration that she's experiencing. There'll be other accelerations associated with gravity pulling backwards, but the problem didn't ask for that. It was just what is the required centripetal acceleration to remain on the track? To figure out what else is going in the problem, we're going to have to dive into the other forces, and that'll happen in the next unit. Okay, so this gets us to a case where we can start to ask questions about, well, what happens if a river is flowing northward at two meters per second? So we have a river here. We have an observer on the bank. We have a boat that is traveling north of east relative to the water at an angle of 36.87 degrees degrees, which is a very special angle. Uh, and so then the river is moving at two meters per second, and then the boat is moving at five meters per second. And we want to know what is the speed of the boat relative to this observer standing on the shore. So this is O on the shore. And then measured relative to north, what is the direction of the boat traveling relative to the observer on the shore? So the secret trick here is that the cosine of 36.87 degrees is four-fifths, and the sine of 36.87 degrees is three-fifths. This is kind of the angle in a three, four, five right triangle. Okay, uh, so that actually is there to simplify our math a little bit. So we uh, write down the expression uh, that the velocity of the boat with respect to the observer on the shore is equal to the velocity of the boat with respect to the river plus the velocity of the river with respect to what's on the shore. And then we write out these uh, directions. So the velocity of the boat with respect to the river, that's five meters per second. And then in this coordinate system, if I decompose this into an i, j coordinates, that's not a j, i, j coordinate system, then the, let's see here, the sine direction here is going to give me the x direction. So this is basically times sine theta, or three fifths in the i hat direction, plus five meters per second times four fifths, that's the cos theta in the j direction. And then we add to that the river, which is two meters per second in the j direction. And so then this becomes uh, uh, five cancel, three i hat. Um, so that's just three i hat. And then we have uh, fives cancel, leaving me the four plus two plus six j hat meters per second. So this gives me the ability to measure the uh, speed, the velocity vector. Uh, I need to figure out what the speed of that particular um, boat is. So that is just uh, the speed v b slash o. And that is the square root of three squared plus six squared which is nine plus 36 or root 45 meters per second or being clean and nice is three root five meters per second. Cool. Then I wanna know what the angle is measure, measured relative to north. I have this velocity vector so I can figure out uh, the angle here. Uh, the way we have set up the problem is that uh, if we have this, uh, I want to measure east of north. I'm going to call that angle phi. That's the vx, that's the vy, and that's my v of the shore. Uh, that angle east of north is going to have a tangent angle 
which is going to be vx over vy. We would normally write down y over x if we were doing a uh, plus x axis uh, point where we we're considering the zero for our angle. But for this, we uh, write down vx over uh, the vy. The vx is three uh, meters per second. Vy is six meters per second. We take, uh, and from there, we find that phi is the arc tangent of a half, or that's equal to 26.57 degrees east of north. Okay, so that gives us an example of how we would figure out uh, these components of the velocity and use this uh, expression here for our um, the uh, relative motions of the particles. Okay. So the final thing I'd like to cover today is this example, uh, which asks, at the instant shown, jet A is traveling at 100 meters per second around a curve, increasing its speed at 20 meters per second squared. Uh, jet B is traveling at 180 meters per second straight, increasing at 15 meters per second squared. Uh, we want to determine the relative velocity and the relative acceleration of A with respect to B at this instant. So I'm going to write down a velocity formula uh, using the relative velocity. I'm going to say that the velocity of A with respect to the ground is going to be the velocity of A with respect to B plus the velocity of B with respect to the ground. And what we care about is this middle term, velocity of A with respect to B. And so then the velocity of A with respect to B is just going to be the velocity of A with respect to the ground plus the velocity of B with, oh, sorry, minus the velocity of B with respect to the ground. So that's A with respect to B. That's velocity of A with respect to the ground minus velocity of B with respect to the ground. Uh, and then we just write down the information that we know in this problem to calculate uh, these components. So as this is set up, I'm going to set up an xy coordinate system here, which is i hat and j hat. I'm not going to worry about picking an origin because we only care about velocities and accelerations right now. Um, but it could be right there for all we care. So. Uh, to figure out uh, the velocity of A with respect to B, we need to know what A is with respect to the ground. Uh, it's going this way at, uh, what, 100 meters per second? And this angle is 45 degrees. And so the velocity of A with respect to the ground is going to be uh, the 100 meters per second times uh, the, let's see here, that angle is going to be here 45 degrees because everything is 45 degrees so it's going to be in the x direction so it's going to be root 2 over 2 that's the cosine of 45 degrees times the 100 meters per second minus the same term 1 root 2 over 2 times 100 meters per second uh, in the uh, j hat direction i need my i hat there so that's the velocity of a with respect to ground Velocity of B with respect to the ground is just going to be the 180 meters per second. So it's 180 meters per second in the I hat direction. And uh, in that case, we're able to, um, yeah, go ahead and uh, subtract these two. And so that's going to be uh, root two over two times, uh, oops, sorry, it's going to be root two over two times 100 meters per second minus 180 meters per second in the i hat direction uh, minus root 2 over 2 times 100 meters per second in the j hat direction and so then that is going to be uh let's see here it's going to be uh 0 0.7071 times 100 minus 180 and that's uh minus 109 109.3 meters per second in the i hat uh, minus uh, 7d.7 meters per second in the j hat. Okay, so this gives us a velocity of a with respect to b. So, sorry, that's the velocity a with respect to b here as well. Okay. 
Okay, to continue, we want to figure out the relative accelerations of these uh, two. So I'm going to clear my math here and uh, get right to it. So the accelerations, we are going to follow a similar expression that the acceleration of A with respect to B is the acceleration of A with respect to the ground minus the acceleration of B with respect to the ground. That means we have to calculate these things. Let's start with the acceleration of B with respect to ground because it's straightforward. It's increasing its speed at 15 meters per second in uh, the I hat direction. And so A of uh, the acceleration of B with respect to the ground is just going to be uh, 15 meters per second squared in the I hat direction. The acceleration of a with respect to the ground is tricky because it's on this curved trajectory. It's a circular path uh, going around here. And so we need to calculate the components from its radial and its tangential component. I'm going to, uh, let's uh, say that this is going to be the radial component in the uh, normal direction plus the tangential component in the tangential direction but we need this in the i and j coordinates. So the acceleration radially is going to be uh, a rad is going to be b squared over r, and then the t and that's going to be 100 meters per second, quantity squared over 500 meters, 500 meters, and that's 20 meters per second squared. The tangential is uh, also going to be 20 meters per second squared. So this just gives the magnitude. Now we have to break them down. The acceleration in the radial component is going this way. So that's the radial. The tangential is headed off in the direction of the motion. It's increasing its speed. So it's increasing in that motion. And so if we break these down, uh, all of these angles here are going to be 45 degrees. So this will be 45 degrees and this other angle here will be 45 degrees. And so the radial motion is going to have a negative component in the x direction, and the tangential is going to have a positive component in the x direction. So the uh, acceleration of A with respect to ground in the x direction is going to be the radial component, uh, it's going to be negative 20 meters per second squared in the radial component, and that's going in the times root 2 over 2. That's the cosine of the 45 degrees, I hat, uh, plus 20 meters per second times root 2 over 2. Uh, that's the tangential component. Uh, and this whole thing is going to sum together to give a 0. That's great. Uh, in the I hat direction, I should say. Uh, I should go ahead and add the J components. So the J components here are plus... Uh, or in that case, minus, both of them are pointing downward in this case. So this is minus 20 meters per second squared, root 2 over 2 in the j hat, minus, that's the radial component, 20 meters per second squared, minus, uh, or times root 2 over 2 in the j hat component. And so that means that the uh, component of A with respect to the ground is minus 28.2 meters per second squared in the j-hat. And then to figure out a of a with respect to b, that is we add the, we uh, subtract uh, the velocity of a with respect to ground minus 28.2 meters per second squared j-hat minus the acceleration of b with respect to the ground, which we calculated as 15 meters per second squared. So 15 meters per second squared I have. So that gives us the capacity to figure out both the velocities and the accelerations with respect to of a with respect to b.